Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines for Living. One of the reasons we tend to worry is that life can quickly get out of control. Someone you care about, someone you love, isn't listening, isn't responding, or just doesn't get it. Say, for example, you are responsible for someone or something, and your best effort isn't enough. You can't walk away from the situation. Quitting is not an option. It may be a teenager, an aged parent who depends on you for help, a family business which seems to be going the wrong way. So what do you do? Pondering this situation, a woman who is the primary caregiver for her parents, both of whom are elderly and in failing health, quoted Philippians 4, 6, which says, Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Then she wrote, It seems to me that anxiety is inevitable. We love people and because we love them. We assume the care of them because they can't care for themselves. At some point, we realize we cannot make them happy or even comfortable, let alone meet all of their needs. Love and responsibility combine to become concern, then worry, then full-blown anxiety. In some cases, added to that anxiety is lack of appreciation for what you are doing, the never-enough syndrome. Yes, life has its moments of anxiety and concern. So what do we do? If you can relate to the situation I've just described, ask yourself the following questions. One, exactly what is my responsibility before God in this situation? Paul wrote that each of us should carry his own load. So you have to ask, how much is enough? Is too much expected of me? Or am I selfishly hesitant to give when someone is totally dependent on me? 2. Ask, am I doing what I'm doing out of love or a sense of duty? 3. Am I depending on a show of appreciation to feel good about what I'm doing? Some things have to be done as unto the Lord without an expectation of thanks or appreciation. Yes, I'm fully aware that hurting individuals who are on the receiving end of the care process often forget that sacrifice is required to be there on demand, something that merits gratitude. Four, what part must I do, and what part must I leave to God to handle? This, of course, is a judgment call. It's not easy to determine. Giving care grudgingly keeps you from being blessed as a caregiver. It creates guilt for the one in need of that care. Five, Could I enlist the help of others so that I have the resources to do what only I can do? Like rescuing a drowning swimmer who can pull you underwater, you have to decide when you've given out everything you have to give and enlist others to provide care. 6. When anxiety turns to worry, am I turning this over to the Lord? You know the commands like, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. The tough part is doing it. 7. Am I praying with thanksgiving every time I feel anxious? It's okay to remind yourself that God really is in control, and thank Him even though you cannot see beyond the immediate problem, you know God will take you through the valley. 8. Have I focused on the fact that God cares for me? I am the object of His care, His interest, and His love but never his anxiety. One who is in control of what you cannot control cares. He makes the difference. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines for Living. If you'd like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our devotional, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines.